Okay, so to submit our proving ground, this is unit six. It's worth one and a half points, so it's worth half as much as our usual assignment. But what's important about these proving grounds is that they are the requirements to earn your creative problem solving badge. And in order to earn it, according to the external badge, you know, certificator, I don't know what you call them, you have to get at least 80% on all the proving grounds, right? But the way these proving grounds are structured, there's no way to miss any of these and still get 80%. <coughs> so I want you to aim to get 100% on all aspects. But they're not that difficult. You just have to really pay attention to them. So this proving ground is all about identifying patterns. It's about the creative process of first recognizing the elements you have, right? So we were playing with things we already created or pixels that we found. And the first thing is we need to accurately identify the resolutions, the pixels per inch, and the physical format, the print size. So this is a hang up for a lot of my students because they think of digital art as just something they look at and it's great. They don't think of the potential it has beyond what they're seeing in that moment. So when we're seeing digital art, we're usually seeing it on a screen. Screens are limited to the number of pixels in that screen, right? Whether it's a phone, whether it's a, a retina display, whether it's a high def TV, but understanding the actual resolution of the file helps you understand its potential, like really looking at it. It's like the difference between looking at your child and seeing their whole future in front of them versus looking at a photo of your child and remembering that one time when, right? So we want to look at our images with the whole future ahead. So how do we do that? We go to image and we go to image size. And that will show us the physical dimensions in inches. If it says anything other than inches, we want it to say inches. That shows us its physical dimensions at this resolution. Now this resolution is vital because this is the professional standard. We need it to be at least 300 and larger than eight by 10 inches. Eight by 10 inches or larger for it to be considered print quality. So that is called standard print resolution, 300 pixels per inch at eight by 10 or larger. That means I can give it to a magazine. I can give it to any kind of publication that professionally prints an album cover and they will be able to print it without it losing any quality. <clears throat> now, in order to check this, you have to make sure that this resample area is not checked. Because if it's checked, that means you're allowing Photoshop to make up pixels or take away pixels. If you uncheck it, it's always going to be the same pixel dimensions. It's always the same pixels. This is like the DNA of your child. You can't change it, right? But you want to know what it's good for. So if I wanted this to be 8 by 10, I could type in 10. It would automatically, because I have the padlock there and it's not going to resample it, it's going to show me what its height would be. So at that's smaller than 8 by 10. So if I do 8 by 12, <clears throat> it's 480 resolution. What I want you to write down is what is it at 300? And at 300, mine is 19.82 by 12.82. So I'm going to go into Canvas and I'm going to create <clears throat> my new one here. I'll just do it as a reply to my old one. I'm going to put my name. And then I'm going to write, this is my option three, but it would be, well, I'll just pretend it's a new one. So it's size. This is also called physical format. Like the, the piece of paper you would print it on, right? And you can round, you don't need to use all the decimals, but basically 20 by 13, you always give the width first at 300 pixels per inch. And then you have to notice whether that's big enough for standard print resolution or not. That's the first rubric. You have to name both of them. 
the physical format size and the PPI, and then say whether what resolution type it is, whether it's screen or print. Now, if my image were quite a bit smaller, I'll resample it here. I don't recommend this. And I'm not going to save this. But let's say I just resampled it so it, it made all of my resolution worse. And now when I go to image size, even though it looks great on the screen, if I check it and I uncheck resample and I put 300 in, so if it was 350, right? Go ahead and change that to 300, and I'll see that this is less than 8 by 10. If it's less than 8 by 10, what you need to do is change it to 72, because that is what is standard screen resolution for phones, for web, for TVs. And then you would put that resolution, so it's basically 30 by 19 at 72 pixels per inch, which is the demo I did here. And if it's at 72 pixels per inch, then it is standard screen resolution. That's the only thing it's big enough for. Because at 300, it's not quite 8 by 10 yet. And that's going to come into play in a big way when we do our printing. So I don't want to save that because I made it smaller than I should. And I had saved it before. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to put in my image. And let's see, where's my new one? I drag and drop it in. They're going to be fairly big. Yeah, that should be it. And then I'm going to shrink it down so it fits nicely with my name. It's another reason why I have you type your name so you think of it like a, a museum label. Well, I wanted my one with the water. Let's see, where is that? I don't think I ever saved it as a JPEG. There we go. So let's save this as a JPEG. So I say save a copy to my computer as a JPEG. I'm just going to do it to the desktop. And this is my desert lake. Creature scape. Remember to always name your files with your name. So if we lose them, we can find them. And there it is. I like to mark these as orange so I can find them and then mark the, the PSD file with, whoops, not that one, with green. And then the third thing you need for the rubric is a description of how your creature lives in that environment. So you have to show the picture because that shows that you've matched the light direction and the angle of anatomy with the environment. Does that mean you have to be incredibly skilled at it? where it's just perfect and every reflection is perfect. No, it means you have to have recognized what the lighting was of the background and done what you can to make it match on the creature, recognize the angle of the background and done what you can to make the anatomy and perspective of the creature match. So it's really, this is proving grounds all about kind of recognizing what's there, not changing the pixels dramatically. And then the third thing for recognizing what's there is to just force yourself to think about it a little bit more. And to do that, sometimes we need to articulate it. So you're going to, to explain how your creature interacts with this environment. You want to think about how it eats, how it uh, protects itself, uh, how it breathes, you know, how it interacts with whatever environment's there. So when I have this image, it might make sense. I've already written my thing. But it might make sense to say how it eats fish, right? Or eats something under the water. Why is it hovering over the water? So instead of when sleeping or sheltering, you know, it can hide itself in the brambles. So 
when hunting at night, its large eyes allow it to see fish in the depths of the canyon lakes. I don't know. Something like that. And instead of preying mostly on bugs and small lizards, I'll say mostly on fish, <laughs> bugs, and small lizards. Right? Kind of recognizing connections between what's there. So I have my name. I have the image, which shows that I'm matching my creature's anatomy and its lighting with the environment. I'm saying it's physical format clearly and it's pixel resolution. And then I am recognizing that that is good enough resolution for print res for printing instead of just for screen. Remember screen would be at 72 pixels per inch. And then I'm giving some description of how it lives in this environment. All right. <laughs>